Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, and I'm going to be doing more open line shows like this to open up questions for health issues, for geopolitical issues. And believe it or not, we have two hours of open lines today. In the second hour, we're going to be joined by Tim Alexander. Uh, you want to call in live at 800-259-5791, on a number of issues. This morning, I'm going through quite a process of grieving, uh, a grieving that exceeds the grieving even of the death that's horrifying of a member of your family, a grieving for what's happening uh, to America and the world, a grieving after seeing the uh, Texas uh, nomination of Mitt Romney, who, if he was even a conservative Mormon, which, of course, is a cult, but Mormons are more conservative in many ways than so-called Christians and in in terms of pro-life issues and family issues, and yet... Mitt Romney's history has proven that he is not, and we had Greg Jackson on the program yesterday. Then the issues of health care. Uh, rather than innovative health care, and I've been on the forefront of this for decades and have received my due recompense of persecution from my so-called colleagues, state licensing boards, and uh, my standing up for the uh, injured worker has uh, given me quite a history. And if you, if you knew my whole testimony in terms of what I've gone through, you'd understand exactly why I'm the way I am. And I can thank God for that, actually. I think that uh, we have to see God in the bad circumstances that happen because they make you what you are. They make you strong. When you have a child with Down syndrome, you've gone through the things that I have through my medical training and residency. It makes you not take any captives when people tell lies or try to twist the truth out of a recognizable uh, fashion or when people are given no options. They're giving horrible options for treatment of medical care, they're, they lose their rights, they lose their jobs, they lose their economy, they lose their autonomy. Now they're talking about 30,000 drones being brought back to America, and I fully support what um, Alex Jones put up with his <laughs> videos, <laughs> talking about uh, Texans to shoot down the drones, and I say, go for it, guys. If you see those suckers up there, they have no business being either non-weaponized or surveillance drones over America. This is ridiculous. Um, you know, why do we tolerate this? I don't know. But I think that the the, uh, the ability to tolerate this is pretty near gone. And, uh, you know, let's go over some of the latest on health issues first. Um, and I'm going to give a timeline. I want to hear your response out there to those people that want to, are listening. Again, the number is 800-259-5791. And I re- gave it kind of briefly yesterday, and I'm going to expand on it. <clears throat> if I take the prophetic which God has showed me some things. It was in clay and iron. It will be in the clay and iron two parts of these. And I take a lot of research and a lot of context all over the world, and I amalgamate it with the Bible and what it says. This is the timeline of what I see happening in uh, currently. And, again, it can be modified, but this is the what I call the most probable timeline we're currently on. Uh, Fukushima is probably going to, and this is not based on any other blogs or newsletters or anything else. This is based on what I have in prayer and what I've been revealed. We are having massive releases of burps of radiation. We proved uh, just last week that about six weeks prior, there was a massive burst of radiation, radio ID 131 picked up from Japan. Uh, I believe by mid-July we will have a massive release of radiation that will result in at least a partial evacuation of Honshu in northern Tokyo. It probably should be much more extensive than that because the population are slowly being salted with radiation. When that happens, and of course the real collapse of the Japanese economy happens, which it will, the teetering economy, which is on the edge now, 161 point drop in the Dow, and uh, people are now getting ready that as early as this weekend, the Spanish economy is on the verge of crashing. And uh, it won't take long. Uh, no matter what the uh, it's Humpty Dumpty time, let's put it that way, the uh, design was purposely made that way because they knew that <clears throat> while the Germans can act and the French can act pretty arrogant and the European Central Bank, they knew purposely that when they allowed these other currencies and countries like Greece, the number one, when millionaires and rich people don't even have to pay taxes, aren't forced to pay taxes, but kind of do it voluntarily, what they expect was going to happen to their country when they have a socialist country that provides with politicians continue to promise things they can't deliver unless they literally print more money or borrow it at exorbitantly high rates illegally. Uh, So in a sense, it's an indirect tax. And so this was a a scenario that the European banksters knew would eventually collapse. And it's almost like, uh, you know, the silent movies where the guy with the mustache and and the tall black hat and cane comes in and he gets the mortgage from the... uh, 
widow, and she knew she couldn't make her last payment, so she only had two payments left to make. But because she couldn't make those payments, he seizes the home. Well, that's what's happening. We're seeing the property of Europeans, people committing suicide, like the latest of a uh, gentleman, a poet, and, an, and a musician jumping off the bridge in the 60s with his mother around 90 because he couldn't get her medical care or medications and because he couldn't even get enough money to eat. Or the, the other gentleman that in Santigma Square, right in front of the uh, German, uh, the the, uh, the, uh, the Athenian Greek Parliament, their uh, building, blew his brains out. And of course, the symbol was the actual blood from his brains being spattered in the shape of Greece on a map. So, um, people need to get the kind of like the, feel the bite. I call the shark bite of what's coming. I think you're going to see Japan have a massive catastrophe by mid-July. I think you're going to have evacuation of at least a portion of Tokyo, which will cause panic. The economy will crash like a lead balloon, and it'll precipitate Europe to cause our five major banks to leverage the course of what's called derivatives on derivatives to cause a massive bank run, which will be stopped very quickly and haphazardly by none other than the abominator in the midst of a crisis where Mitt Romney is not standing up and speaking about real issues the conservative right wants to handle, including economic security, rather than further integration with European debt. Remember, Obama Clause delivered $1.1 trillion to the European Central Bank without either approval of Congress or even any authority. And this is only one of many uh, installments, started by George Bush, but amplified at an enormous pace. If George Bush was running at, say, six miles an hour, Obama has passed him at 16,000 miles an hour. So people say, oh, that was the Republicans. No, George Bush did some bad things, but Obama has outstripped him like the flash. So that's what I expect to happen. I think that we're going to be facing a uh, election where, as uh, Steve Dace and Greg Jackson have stated, we're going to have um, uh, Mr. Hoefling on, who's the presidential candidate for the America's Party, who is truly pro-life. By the way, I got a newsletter this morning, an email from Rand Paul, who is pro-life and who is supporting this personhood uh, amendment. I agree with Rand Paul. Ron Paul, however, believes that 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 states can determine personhood because they have the right to actually determine whether abortion is legal in their state. And I totally disagree with that. I agree with his financial policies, but this idea that states' rights determine personhood. We need to wipe out Roe versus Wade so all Americans, including the unborn and the elderly, cannot be terminated through so-called ethics panels because of Obama Eugenicare or any other version of it after the dismantle Obamacare, which we hope and pray that it's going to be wiped out next month. The problem is they have to have something to replace it because, like in Greece, their economies crash so badly they can't even get chemotherapy drugs or heart drugs, so people are literally dying as we speak today not getting their medications they need can their die in terminal states with very serious health problems. The disaster in Europe will cause them to move very quickly after this faltered election, which will probably be dragged on to the end of November. Uh, and it'll be a very dark Christmas. It'll be the nightmare before Christmas. That'll be uh, the what they should call this election, you know, the nightmare before Christmas. And then when we have the abominator, there'll be still disputes by the real birthers. And one of the most prominent recently was at the uh, nomination convention uh, fundraiser with Donald Trump making the statement that he still doesn't believe that Obama's birth certificate is valid. And even the registrar for the Arizona State Com uh, Voters Commission stated in 10 weeks the Hawaiian registry of birth certificates will not respond in any way, shape, or form. So in 2013, I expect that Mr. Obama will pull a cat out of, as they say, he'll pull a, cat, a rabbit out of the hat. And uh, not only has he promised the Israelis that they can go to war then, but no, he'll bring a toxic peace that will partition the state of Israel and the city of Jerusalem. But the Jews will get the Temple Mount with a treaty that he will confirm. Back in a moment. on some of the news and we're going to bring up some issues as they arise with our callers 800-259-5791 800-259-5791 call in live 
Uh, firstly, the, uh, the new information on U.S. stocks fall on labor and business activity data. And, uh, of course, uh, the, it outweighs also the strong readings in Germany. What's going on, too, of course, is the Spanish debt is hanging by a thread. The latest information in Spain is that the Spanish banking crisis push comes to shove is the latest article, and this is in Forbes. Uh, the Spanish banking crisis is forcing other, uh, another showdown in Europe with the German-led northern contingent increasing under siege, not just from the south, but now from just about everywhere else. So uh, watch this closely. By this weekend, some major cracks are going to occur, and it could well be a, uh, a European bank run. By the way, today is the 200th anniversary of the War of 1812, America's Forgotten Fight. And people don't forget, although they have the unveiling in the White House today of the new picture of former President George Bush and uh, his first lady. And uh, they burned the White House 200 years ago. People don't, for, don't remember that. But this is a 200th anniversary of the War of 1812. And I'm sure in that discussion there in the White House, they didn't mention that. Of course, uh, we know that we have a uh, functionary of the Queen in the White House, Mr. Obama, who is actually was curtsying to the uh, descendant of the former rape and pillager of America. And, of course, here's another health issue that's interesting. People who work night shifts are at much higher risk of developing breast cancer. And, of course, the reason why is because you don't have proper release of melatonin. Melatonin is one of the most powerful releasers and protectors against cancer. In fact, when we were giving people hyperbaric oxygen in Denver, we would actually give them melatonin injections. Uh, latest, of course, in the global warming news, they still have the fools there. This is a report I have from CTV News in Canada. Global warming gas levels hit troubling milestone. Of course, this is all a foolishness. It's unsupported garbage. In fact, we, that's why we have Robert Felix on. He'll be back on shortly. Uh, he'll be back on from his trip. I guess he went to Italy over the last three weeks. The world's uh, air has reached uh, what scientists call a troubling new milestone for carbon dioxide, the main global warming pollutant. And, of course, carbon dioxide simply turns through the carbon cycle into oxygen through plants. And if you don't kill the benthic layer of the oceans, which is the upper... 10 meters to 30 feet, which makes 80% of the world's oxygen, and you don't knock down the forests and cut down the green areas, you have plenty of oxygen capacity that if you put more CO2 like we have in greenhouses, you're going to grow more food faster, and you're going to produce more oxygen. And yes, there is a peak oxygen level, but there's a lot of stretch in the system, and the idea that you're going to end a carbon age by getting rid of fossil fuels, and which it isn't, there's no such thing as fossil fuels, it's all abiotic. Even if you didn't use any energy, you had energy from a vacuum, you had solar energy beamed down from space, like some of the uh, 1975 RAND project uh, research developments. You had uh, torsion field imaging, uh, nuclear tokamak fusion reactors, wave turbine generators off the coast, geothermal energy, and didn't use a drop of oil for that. You'd still need a huge amount of petrochemicals to produce all the other products that we utilize in our so-called modern world. So uh, people... Uh, believe this lie they don't understand so you know what I want people to do is start realizing what they need to be a prepper first off it's very likely that we are going to be facing by as early as this fall an economic uh, at least cardiac arrest doesn't mean you're dead but it means you may need the paddles and that means we'll probably have a bank holiday sometime this fall before the election for four to five days at least uh, after European and regrouping which, of course, because they manipulate the whole system, it's all a uh, made-for-TV action to distract away from the conservative right. And, of course, the conservative right is being paralyzed now by putting a candidate who won't capitulate publicly to the conservative elements of the party without your base, Romney. Uh, and I don't want to agree with these astrologers because I don't believe in their astrology foolishness, but the fact is anybody with common sense just looking at this politically would realize that as it stands, Romney doesn't have much of a hope unless he capitulates to, to Ron Paul and his libertarian move to take over the Fed Reserve, to the pro-life movement with the personhood issues, and other issues including the Defense of Marriage Act, which of course in the, uh, the court now in Boston, the senior federal court has struck down the law there. So uh, this is Massachusetts. So the issue is that the family is under attack, the American middle class is under attack, our rights and the Constitution are under attack, and now they want to bring back 30,000 drones, uh, which can be weaponized, like they're bringing back many of them that are weaponized over in these countries. 
uh, to use for police forces here. In fact, I noticed the Iranian Oceanside, California, just five miles away, and I can loan them to any of the local cities. They have Bearcats, which are armored personnel carriers for local SWAT teams to go in. And again, you don't need this for domestic terrorism. This is just ridiculous. I mean, what are you going to do, stop uh, you know, cruise missiles or rocket propel grenades? I mean, if it's domestic violence, you do not need a Bearcat. And these, uh, in a time when they have shortness of budgets for school students and for uh, schools, they need to buy Bearcats. I think this is a good example of why America is uh, literally driving itself into bankruptcy. I want to switch gears for a minute, some positive things. We've done some major improvements on our appearance in the front pages. You'll start to see those. We're going to soon have what's called sliders where you can actually select them. There'll be direct link pictures. One of the first ones up there shows you a picture of the ageless and life support. And if you hit that picture, it'll take you directly to a subpage where you can see the ageless chocolate. You'll be able to see lots of other specials. Right now, uh, if you haven't prepared already, and you're a prepper, and you think, well, I, I think I prepare pretty well. But I'd like to know, do you have clean filtered water? And the only clean water that's going to work is going to be pure water system water. Do you have emergency storage food? And we have the PrepareWise now, which is the best storage, storage food you can get. And you can also use ageless, life support, glycemics, and NutriComplete and store that for years, even while beyond its so-called FDA-approved expiry date, not only for daily meal replacement for health, which I use, by the way, for my my breakfast and off my lunch is the Ageless Life Support Glycemics and NutriComplete. And they're fantastic. They should provide more nutrients than you can imagine. It's nutrient density that counts, not the calories. That nutrient density supports your metabolism and regeneration of tissues. Ageless, of course, and I want to go through these so people will understand just how unique the NutriMed line of products are compared to any other products. And it's not just the product line. It's the integration with the wellness conditions, which now are private only for our customers, and that means we've been getting a, a hundreds and hundreds of emails and calls of people that are either not customers who are accessing the wellness conditions and going off on their own and trying to think that they can second-guess Dr. Deagle and find something similar elsewhere, which is a waste of their time, effort, and a waste of their money because they won't have the follow-up, they won't have the assessment, and they will not get the equivalent products. So let's go through some of these. The Nutrimeds line, Ageless, there's a combination of the rice and pea protein, all the digestive enzymes, the SGS sulfurophane glycosinolate, which is the most powerful stimulant for second phase two detox, which is the most efficient phase of detoxification, for DNA repair and for activating cell apoptosis. So we use it, SGS, malignant block, to fight cancer or prevent it. Then Life Support, of course, has the rice and pea protein, all the activated vitamins. No other company has the activated vitamins, including the 5-methylfolate, all the digestive enzymes, probiotics, and all the phase 2 detox cofactors. No other food replacement in the world has this. Back in just a moment with more, and your call is 800-259-5791. Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. Um, interesting request I had the other day, which is a request for dealing with Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Um, you know, when you have urgent requests like that, it's, it's important, number one, that you get an email to us right away of all the details, including your wellness, what you've already done already, what conventional treatments you've had. Uh, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever will respond to our three antipathogenics, the uh, Silver 100, Nutridine, Alamed, uh, and, of course, use of Munomax. And then, of course, we recommend a 30 to 50 grams minimum of neutral pH, the only neutral pH, uh, ascorbic acid, which is the Power C+. Plus. Along with every three capsules of Power C, you want to take the full vitamin K2. And uh, that will have a dramatic effect at stopping the Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. So just a, a side there. We also have a lot of people that request over herpes zoster. We have a good zoster protocol. I'll be posting up a, a specific protocol for Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, which responds to high-dose immunoglobulins. It's also Immunomax is in the Ageless. Uh, going down further, if there's a lot of cytokines released during Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever or swine avian flu, and a combination of Allerblock and Allergon, along with at least 50 to 60 grams a day of the vitamin C, are very important to block that reaction. Allerblock, of course, is a natural histamine blocker. 
allergan is a diamine oxidase inhibitor. It's the only one available in the world. And, of course, uh, these will block allergies, autoimmune conditions like severe asthma, uh, autoimmunity, immune complex disease. I had an interesting uh, request yesterday from a gentleman who had very bad vertigo uh, and uh, was having some Meniere's disease. He was diagnosed about eight months ago, found when he started drinking milk. Again, his attacks returned. Uh, one of the gifts that God's given me is that the, the ability to not only ask the right medical questions, but also refer him on to see one of our environmental docs. But the gift to understand when I reviewed his history that he had other factors triggering his problem with his middle ear. And the inflammation of the middle ear is amplified by food allergies. You cut out all GM food, wheat, corn, soy, and milk products. Uh, and don't have anything GM, genetically modified, no aspartame, Splenda, or artificial sweeteners, and no uh, MSG, monosodium glutamate. And, of course, we recommend that he take things to normalize his gut, which means things like living probiotic every meal, living probiotic also daily, uh, the Immunomax powder or capsules, which is the Nutri-Immune. Nutri-Immune is the Immunomax capsule in capsule form. Uh, the healing of the gut wall with berberstatin, which not only normalizes insulin resistance, but also gets rid of pathogens, along with Alamax, Alamed, Silver 100, Nutridine, and, of course, the healing of the gut wall with gastroheal, which is zinc carnosine. So that protocol is very effective. We also have some amazing responses for the issue of depression with our BH4 biopter and mood balance. And we use BH4 biopter along with Sammethyl and Calmind, and we have testimonials where the average person is dramatically better in three to five days not three to five weeks but three to five days works very very fast uh, our protocol for bone is not to use these toxic bisphosphonates or these long acting injections they now have injections you can take yearly or once a month I think it's insane all these drugs are create more brittle bone rather than more dense bone on the lab test or the dual photon scan but it's not proper approval of Mellor bone because you need to build a collagen matrix and then build bone around it. So bone generator, six capsules taken after the two larger meals, power C+, plus, usually at least three to five capsules three times a day, collagen max, two capsules twice a day minimum, mountain red velvet, at least three capsules twice a day, my cell D3, 5,000 IUs or the drops, 1,000 IUs per drop, three 5,000 IU capsules or 15 drops twice a day, and then, of course, the full vitamin K2, one capsule for every three capsules of the power of the uh, power C+. Uh, things to improve bone density, energetic technologies, Vibra Slim, number one. Then you can use energetic technologies, Lumen Photon, over the areas that are weak on the dual photon scan. Uh, and energetic technologies such as the Metathera or Pulse Magnetic Field. PMT is the most powerful, the most rapid acting, but the Metathera will work for home therapy. Uh, very effective in lumen photons. So these are also very helpful. If you've got really severe disease, too, mild hyperbaric therapy, 1.3 atmosphere is very helpful when you get oxygen into the tissues. We see a lot of uh, concern about increasing the risk of uh, Alzheimer's disease. We start off with cognition, ignition, and brain power. Brain power has been pulsating and helps to form new synapses. We use syn uh, synaptin, new heron, which is acetylcarnitine, we use omnicoline and CDP choline, alethiamine, which is the tetrahydrofurfural disulfide form of thiamine, very, very powerful thiamine. And uh, these work together with the combination of alethiamine, CDP choline, and uridine monophosphate to increase cholinergic pathways. So someone that's getting demented, it can make a dramatic difference in terms of their cholinergic activity. Uh, phospholipids, remyelination of the neural pathways, Nutrifos, two soft gels three times a day. We have Omega Supreme, which is from anchovy and sardine from Norway. It's so quickly processed and cleanly, there's no rancidity. Omega 369, which also has GLA or gamma linoleic acid, very good for female hormone and male hormone support. And by the way, when we're talking about male hormone support, you start off with things like mitothyroid for hypothalamus as well as thyroid and adrenal. And then if there's adrenal problems, we will add for males 50 milligrams or two of the DHEA and 100 milligrams of the pregnenolone. And for females, 25 milligrams of pregnenolone. For females as well, femgesterone, 
and for males, men's max, which will reduce the binding of sex hormone binding protein to the male hormones. Because a lot of times the male hormone levels would be adequate, so we don't need to go to extreme testosterone, which will also increase your production of male hormone. Extreme testosterone, very effective, one to two tablets twice a day. We have a lot of people requesting uh, help regarding their eyes. We have a caller. Your name and your question is? Yes, greetings, Dr. Bill. This is Mark in Oregon. Oh, hi, Mark. How are you doing? Fine, sir. How are you doing? Excellent. Just trying to go through some history of what's going on in our current news and some of the nutraceutical protocols, which I think are very unique. It's not just uh, throwing out, quote, any vitamins. These are Nutrimeds, I call them, yeah. which are more powerful than the meds that we had years ago. If I had these back when I was in practice... Uh, now I do consulting and I help people every day, doctors and patients all over the world. Yeah. And they are the top nutrients on the planet. People have to understand that these will replace your need for any chronic medication whatsoever and actually prevent disease, heart disease, cancer, and other problems, dementia. And right now in a time where people are getting more radioactive exposure, more exposure to smart meters, more toxic GMO food that they're approving by the FDA, although the FDA are blocking things like calling it corn sugar, which the corn manufacturers want to do because they're using mercury alkali extraction, which means you're getting mercury poisoning. Right. And mercury attaches to the beta subunit of neurotubulin. The neurotubulin subunits literally snap together like Lego blocks to create the dendrites in the end of your neurons. So when you're doing this, this research was completed after we started it back in 1980 at the University of Calgary with Dr. Murray Vimy when we were doing work with, uh, he was working on his dental pathology degree and I was assisting him with developing equations for total body burden of mercury. This is 32 years ago. The problem is we went through a lot of persecution, a lot of dentists lost their license because they were removing mercury amalgams. Now it's considered kind of standard of care that uh, you don't dare raise your head up as a dentist and try to say mercury is good for you, it's vitamin M. Yeah. But, but mm. uh, there's still lots of knuckleheads out there and uh, I don't find very many doctors, though, that are willing to argue with me anymore. Uh, if they are, they have not been properly advised in advance that even no matter what their so-called specialty degree, if they presume that they know more than me about a specific issue, whether it's a cause of heart disease or genetic problems or organic acids, they stoutly get a intellectual spanking, which they need. <laughs> Well, you know, Dr. Bell, the uh, the brainwashing that the medical profession, especially in this country, goes through in their training, I think it's really a me measure of the person. Well, it's abuse. To whether uh, they're even able to, to change their mind about something that is well, not as, 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 mercury. Well, the problem is in medical school, they did a study at the uh, uh, University of Chicago, Illinois Medical School, and uh, McGill back about 25 years ago. And they discovered that the average medical student uh, loses quantifiably eight IQ points going through medical school, and that's equivalent to two uh, head injuries, equivalent to 24-hour amnesia. So I guess medical school is equivalent to two head injuries. Not good. On the break, I was just uh, talking about we're going to be, do a humor section on uh, Nutramedical, actually. And we're going to have a uh, on our new sliders that will be going up in the next few days. We've got a comic strip that's actually up there now on a regular rotating. And you, if you, go, you click on the little logo, the little uh, mortar and pestle Nutramedical logo on the upper left-hand side, or refresh the page, you'll see it come up with a comic strip of a doctor and patient having a dialogue. It says, the doctor says to the patient, now, uh, Mr. Such-and-Such, -such, in your busy day, do you have time for an hour of exercise and change in diet and activity uh, and uh, uh, an hour a day? Or would you rather be dead 24 hours a day? And I think that's pretty appropriate. And the thing is, it really comes down to personal responsibility. You can't make a health care system. You can make a health education system. And uh, you can also, you got to make people personally responsible. If you think that always a doctor can rescue you, oh, he can always do surgery. He can always give me a pill. He can always treat my cancer, even though I'm smoking my head off. That's why when New York decided that they're going to take a aim at giant-sized sugar drinks, uh, how about just get rid of all these damn sugar drinks, including sugary sodas and uh, sugary uh, orange juice and other things like that. Better to have the actual fruit. And uh, the problem is we have a society hell-bent on horrifying health problems, and then at the tail end, everybody's going to pay for it. And then when people get upset, they get upset, oh, my gosh, they're now in a death panel because such and such an Apache score in the intensive care unit or they're a certain age. 
and uh, they want they don't realize that. Uh, and I'm writing together a paper on this. So I'll just give you a couple of the ideas uh, in terms of how to make healthcare affordable for everybody. First off, and tell me what you think of this, Mark. Number one, you make Medicare available to anybody. Anybody that comes in here, even if they're a guest worker from Kenya or Mexico picking fruit. You make it available and you make the price reasonable enough you can actually afford to buy health care. And uh, if you, what you can do is have a means test to determine you can top it up by having people get tax write-offs by donating to this fund. So I would certainly vote donate money to this fund so the people that couldn't afford insurance could buy insurance. Secondly, you have oversight so these insurance companies wouldn't do bad things. Like, for example, recently the military were forced into a contract with a health insurer that's had a bad record and had multiple lawsuits against it. That's not the way you treat your military. So insurance carriers that don't play by the rules, we literally remove their license to do business. And that means you have proper competition. There's nothing wrong with a profit, but the profits that these insurers are making is freaking ridiculous. Same with the drug companies. Drug companies want to develop new drugs. First off, most drugs are Me Too drugs, or drugs that shouldn't be developed in the first place. What we should be doing if the, is, is these drug companies, if they were smart, would be to invest in nutraceutical companies and not raise the price through the ceiling, but allow people to get access to them at reasonable prices. What we have is the FDA, which is an arm of the drug companies, coming after nutraceutical companies and causing incredible grief. Uh, some of our suppliers that make our particular nutraceuticals have been giving us unbelievable grief since January. And this is, of course, under the nanny, nanny state uh, Obama. So I would say, first off, abolish the FDA and have it licensed to individual universities that would be on a limited contract that would have performances. And if they didn't perform properly, they would be fired. Uh, you wouldn't have permanent, we call uh, political bureaucrats, I call the FDA bureaucrats, sitting around there shooting elastics at each other and playing games with paper balls, throwing around to see if they can get a basket, or playing video games with their iPhones in a cubicle rather than actually doing the damn job. Most of them are unqualified to do what they do anyway, or they just want to cause trouble because that's how they stay employed. So fire the FDA, fire the Environmental Protection Agency, fire the uh, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission because the NRC now, when they get rid of JASCO, is a good example. So that would cut down health care costs. Secondly, get rid of the idea that you have to pay doctors a fee for service. How about a fee for time? If you need a doctor an hour of doctor's time, you pay the doctor an hour. And if the doctor, by the way, designates or his protocol in his office designates that you should see a nurse practitioner or a naturopath or a dietitian, you pay them too, based on the time use. You don't, it's none of your business why they're there. They just simply punch it in, let's say, to the nearest quarter hour, and that's what you pay. Uh, then it would simplify the process very, very simply. You wouldn't have this massive, you know, database gathering, spits not healthcare system. And you'd, uh, the doctor could have a pyramid of people working with him that uh, we would be able to make sure that the system would cover. Yes. This well, idea you know, of having, know. yeah, and, and same with hospitals. We can have hospitals with borders. Do you need to build more big hospitals? No, you've got telecommunications. So you could have someone's, if they're in long-term care, you can have a ventilator at home. You can have a hospital bed at home that moves around. You can have even health technicians that come around the clock and check things. You can have even people on hyperalimentation, IV lines hospitals without borders okay this is easy to do it's not complicated chemotherapy you don't need to do high dose chemo you can do low dose chemo based on nutrigenomics like dr brzezinski has been researching for years and what you do is you use other things for example at home if somebody's had a stroke you put a home hyperbaric chamber on them so they can literally go to sleep in the chamber and sleep all afternoon and evening or night in a hyperbaric chamber which feeds those cells that have been traumatized but they're not dead 99 percent of those cells are not dead in their brain they're simply traumatized with cerebral edema or in their metabolic shock, and all you need to do is give them the right nutrients, Nutrimeds, the right oxygen and energetic technologies like pulse light therapy, magnetic field, which we know works, and they're going to come back. Same way with stem cell therapy. People should have, every single person should have their stem cells and bone marrow banked. And there should be a national bone marrow bank, so when someone gets very seriously ill, you can literally, and this is the future, and this is, this is going to be inexpensive, you print their organs. You literally print the collagen backbone, take their stem cells from the bank, and rebuild a kidney, a brain, an eye, whatever, a part of their brain if they get a stroke, and integrate that. This is the future, and it's going to be less expensive if we do it for everybody. But we need to have it rationalized. Same with the duplication of uh, 
hospital supplies. Why do you have in a big city like Denver three positron emission tomography scanners when all of Europe doesn't have two? I mean, it doesn't make sense. Mm. If you're not going to utilize it, I would utilize it a lot because I was doing advanced studies. I'd have, I'd go to court in Denver. I was on five different panels, and this is part of the reason why the Attorney General and all these employers got so pissed off at Deagle. I got death threats and everything. People don't know if they actually knew it, they'd have to actually get somebody, uh, one of these Hollywood stars, to play my part of the horrors that I've gone through, even just trying to get to court without getting packets of money or death threats at night. So, for example, yeah, we get people with brain injuries, and I'd simply do a PET scan. I wouldn't just do a PET scan. I'd do a PET uh, scan with advanced quantitative EEGs through Lexicor, and I'd walk into the court with that data, and they would turn, the lawyers would literally turn white. Like, they just, all of a sudden, the blood was drained from them. Like, oh, my God, Deagle's here. And he's got tabbed charts are a foot thick. You know, oh, my gosh, he's got all this stuff with these experts. What the hell will we do next? Okay, uh -huh. so then they started hominem attacks, you know. What are your religious beliefs, Dr. Deagle? Well, what the hell does that have to do with somebody that's got a brain scan because they got a brain injury? Okay, so... When people are listening to this program, they think, ah, we have another caller. Your question, go ahead, is in your name. Hello, hello, you're on the air. Hey, thanks. Yeah, um... What, what's your first name I'm and what uh, city you're from? I'm from Salt Lake, and my name's Jim. Hello, Jim, how you doing? Hey, thanks. I'm... I'm hanging in there. I got some of my own health problems I'm dealing with, but uh, everybody you know, does. They just don't know it. You know, we're all in a state of uh, dying, but we just don't know. Uh, we may not have symptoms. Let's put it that way, or we don't have anything that's kind of biting at us at the moment. Well, I had such good health, and then there was an event that happened in my life that I regret that really accelerated, like caused a shift where I started having a lot of health problems. That was in 2010, and uh, what happened? It's been, it, uh, or can you say it was kind of something in my personal life, you know, that uh, just threw me for a loop? And uh, oh, you my, mean like a like a know. major stressor? You mean? Yeah, yeah, kind of like, like something that like went against my my morals, right? Uh, and uh, just and people don't realize that I mean, when you have something like that, a moral uh, cognitive dissonance, uh, just like the current situation in our world, where you're asked to do things that are immoral. It, it literally generates free radicals that destroys your sight or ability to fight infections, radiation. It can kind of activate genes that, or turn, turn off some genes and activate other ones that shouldn't be. So it can cause heart attacks, strokes. It can accelerate aging. It can push you into heart failure. That's why you see a lot of people when they get, quote, heartbroken or they end up with some horrible stress. They've not only lost their job or lost a relative, uh, had a broken marriage or lost a child, where you'll see their health just deteriorate. You say, my gosh, they have they ever aged since I saw them last a year or two ago. And that's why it's important that we have that zone of compensation with nutraceuticals, positive attitude, and so on. Uh, stay right there. We are going into Hour 2 Overdrive for Open Lines, uh, Jim and uh, Mark. And we're going to be also joined here shortly with Tim Alexander. But we're going to take any wellness nutraceutical question as well as geopolitical historical because we need to stay, take stock of what's going on with our health because our health system is on the chopping blocks. In the next month, the Supreme Court is supposed to decide on this. Really, it should be us. And I am preparing a paper for AMAC, and that will be posted up on Nutramedical. I'm going to give specific concrete solutions to every one of these problems, including our problems with our environment, our energy, our financial systems, etc. I'm going to write papers on every one of these, and they'll be posted on clayandiron.com and Nutramedical. Back in a moment. 